Hey guys, what's up? I'm going to show you how to make Chico's Tacos at home, which is basically rolled tacos in a tomato sauce and salsa. Okay, so to get started, I have a pack of chicken thighs. Make sure they're bone in. This is going to create the tomato broth for the soup. Okay, so I have a small handful of cilantro. I have three celery sticks. I have one small onion and a little bunch of baby carrots, but you could use three whole carrots if that's what you have. Okay, so to get started, I get one pot of boiling water. And to that, I'm adding my celery. I'm adding my small onion. I'm going to go ahead and add my baby carrots. After I do that, I'm going to grab the small bunch of cilantro I had and just dump that in. Next, get your chicken. Uh, make sure you wash it off first because chickens are really dirty. And just make sure you throw it in there. Uh, like I said, uh, make sure it's bone in because this is going to create the broth and you need all of that bone flavor for the soup. Okay, so put your lid on and lower the temperature to about uh, low medium heat and let that simmer for two hours. Next, we're gonna make our salsa. So while you're waiting for that, grab um, about 10 serrano chilies, four long green chilies, four jalapenos, and about seven or eight tomatillos, and then a small piece of garlic. So I start off by chopping all the ends off of the peppers. Make sure to de-seed them because that is where all the heat's gonna be carried. So if you don't like a lot of heat, make sure to remove the stems and yeah, and all of those seeds. Okay, so I'm just chopping the ends off, and for your tomatillos too, uh, make sure you peel them off nicely and rinse them off really good because a lot of dirt does get trapped inside of the wrapper sometimes, so make sure you just rinse those off really good. Okay, so here you can see I've just removed all of the stems from the chilies, and I removed the stems from the tomatillos, and then I just throw them all into a pot of boiling water. Um, so while you're making this chili sauce, you're going to just let it simmer down and you're going to go back into your tomato sauce and you're going to start that. So I have 10 tomatoes on the vine and I also have one jalapeno, one large piece of garlic, and a little tiny piece of onion. So yeah, I don't like that much onion flavor so that's why mine is so small but if you prefer more you can definitely add in more onion to your liking or taste. Okay, so going back to our chicken broth, this is two hours later, and you can see all of that fat on top and all of that flavor that we got from the bone. If you were to use chicken breast, you would not get the flavor that you would achieve with the bone, so make sure you do that. And now I have a strainer, and I have a bowl underneath just to make sure that I catch all of my chicken broth, and I'm just straining through the pieces of vegetables and chicken. And if you want, you guys can actually roll your tacos with chicken but I'm going to use ground beef. Um, this chicken I'm actually just going to save for the next day to make a chicken salad or a casserole or something. So as you can see we have all of that nice flavor we achieved for our broth. Okay going back into another pan we're just going to throw in all of our tomatoes. Uh, make sure they are clean and rinsed off and de-veined and then add in your vegetables. Okay, so next we're going to top all of our vegetables with that hot chicken broth and we're going to let them just simmer down into that flavor. Next, I'm adding two cubes of caldo de tomate, but if you guys have the powder form, just add two tablespoons in place. And then I'm going to add half a tablespoon of oregano. I'm going to add half a tablespoon of cumin. I'm going to add one tablespoon of salt. And then I'm going to add about one teaspoon of black pepper. The seasonings are really optional and very versatile, so if you guys like or don't like something, you guys can definitely change it up, add more or less depending on your taste. Okay, so now I'm just adding about one tablespoon of caldo de tomate, and I did go in later with a second tablespoon of caldo de tomate because I did like to adjust it to my flavor of taste, and yeah, I just preferred a little bit more flavor. So going back to my chilies now, I'm pulling them out and as you can see, they're lighter in color and they're a little bit um, soft and plump. As you can see, the tomato has also broken up. You want to make sure that the tomatillos cook uh, really well through and that they're very mushy. If they're not cooked through, that's actually when you get that sour bitter taste. If you guys have ever made sauces before with tomatillos or anything, you've, you can realize that the taste can be very sour. Um, a trick to making that sourness go away is just to cook them for a very long time until mushy. So I'm putting all my chilies into a blender with some of that chicken broth, one tablespoon of cumin, a bunch of cilantro, and then I'm just going to blend it all up. 
Once it's nice and blended, I'm going to squeeze in half a lime. This is just going to kind of um, kill the heat a little bit if it's too spicy for you. And it's going to add some really good flavor as well. So yeah, I'm just adding in half a lime. Next, I'm going to add in about one tablespoon worth of salt. It seems like a lot, but um, you need to flavor it. But like I said, if you want to start off with about half a tablespoon or a teaspoon, it's completely up to you. So going to my pot, I'm just going to strain through my chili. As you can see, it's really thick, so I'm just using more of that chicken broth to strain through all of the sauce so I can get the seeds out in the skin. Okay, after about 30 minutes, this is the thickness that I'm going for. If you guys want it a little thicker, you guys can simmer it a little bit longer. So getting all my tomatoes out of there, I'm just adding them into the blender. And uh, as you can see, they do have skins. So just like the sauce, we are going to go ahead and strain them later just to get all those seeds out. So as you can see, I'm just adding some of that liquid that we boiled the tomatoes and vegetables in. And the liquid, as you can see, it has the fat in it, the little um, fat bubbles. That is actually just from the broth that we used for that. So yeah, blend it together. And you're going to get a very thick sauce like this. Don't worry that it looks weird or thick or maybe even tastes weird because of the raw tomato flavor. So we're going to go back to our pan that we boiled all of that in. And we're going to add some oil at the bottom. And then we're going to take our mesh strainer, pour it over the top, and just pour in your thick mixture into that. As you can see, it's almost like the chili where it might have trouble straining through because it is very thick. So I just get some more chicken broth from the beginning or the juice that you guys had boiled all the tomatoes in. And you can just stream it in. This is actually the juice that I used to boil all the vegetables in. So it's going to have all those nice flavors that we boiled the tomatoes, jalapenos, and the chicken broth. So yeah, I'm just using all of that to strain it through. And once I do that, you're going to see all the nasty stuff at the end that would have been in there. If you want, you can actually throw this back in the blender with some more of the chicken broth, blend it up again, and strain it through again. Uh, if you want, you can just discard it, though. Okay, so next I have to season my tomato soup. And I'm just going to add in, I believe it's about two tablespoons of caldo de pollo. Like I said, adjust it to your flavor taste. Add some salt in there if you want, and then just give it a mix. Okay, so next I'm going to my corn tortillas, and I'm actually just using the recipe that was on the back of the masaka bag, but you guys can really just buy them. I just wanted to kind of test my limits and make everything from scratch. But yeah, um, for the most part, honestly, I would just suggest buying them because this is already a very long process. So making them actually was just like a little bit uh, bigger and harder step for me. And it didn't change much, to be honest. So I would just buy them if I was you. Uh, so yeah, I followed the instructions on my bag, made the dough, and then I just formed tiny balls into the dough. And then I just used my tortilla press, and I pressed them down firmly with plastic covering the outside so they don't get stuck. And yeah, this is what they look like. I know they don't look so pretty, but in the end, uh, you can't really tell when you roll them up. So yeah. Next, I get my ground beef, and I'm only using about one pound of ground beef. I uh, have some little onions cut up for the flavoring, and I saw that I saute them in a pan, and I'm just adding in a little bit of garlic salt. I add in some onion powder, and like I said, this is optional. This is just what I use, but you guys can switch up the seasonings to your preferred taste. And then I add some black pepper, and of course, some caldo de pollo. Okay, so once that's almost cooked up, you're going to want to add in your onions if you do prefer those. Uh, you can even add in some crushed garlic. That would be really good. Okay, so give it all a mix. Um, and then you're going to want to drain the fat. As you can see, there's a lot of fat in there, a lot of liquid. So I just get some paper towels and I make sure to press all of that fat and grease out of the meat. Okay, so here I am just making my corn tortillas. Um... If you, a trick to keeping them soft is actually just throwing them into a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag right after they've hit, uh, right after they've gotten off of the coma. So yeah, as you can see, I got it out, and I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of the meat mixture, and I'm gonna put it directly into the middle. Make sure you don't overstuff these because it's very easy to overstuff them, and if you do, a lot of the meat will kind of like seep out once you're frying. And when you're frying and it seeps out, uh, it's gonna be really messy. It might like splash and hit you because of the grease from the meat. So yeah, just make sure that you don't overstuff them. So now I have some hot oil going right now, and make sure you just place it roll side down, as you can see. 
That way it just kind of locks the um, size into place. Okay, so at the end, I have all of my stuff set up, my green chili and my sauce. Just pour your sauce directly over top of your tacos. And then you're going to want to get some shredded cheddar cheese. And you pour that over top. And then grab some of your green chili sauce and just drizzle that over the top of your tacos. I serve it with a side of french fries because that's what Chico's does, and then just top it over with some of your green chili sauce. As you can see, I'm recording because I do have a TikTok. Um, follow me at Ari Monica, link in the description box. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.